This is the 2015 mechanics exam, question 3. Uh, it starts off with, cats have the ability to orientate themselves in a fall, allowing them to avoid many injuries when, even when drops upside down. Cats can even do this without tails to help them and they do not need, the, uh, need to be rotated first. I can tell you straight off the bat, this is probably this idea is probably taken from a video by Smarter Every Day uh, on YouTube, dropping cats. Um, if you want to just learn the concepts, I'd look it up and uh, have a look, it's pretty interesting. Anyway, so sequence of events, typical 3kg cat. So the cat demonstrates, uh, determines which way is up by rotating its head. The cat exerts internal forces, notice internal forces, we'll come back to that later, to twist the front half of its body to face down by twisting its spine around its centre of mass and aligning its rear legs. The cat exerts forces to twist the back half of its body to face down by arching its back so the cat lands safely. The cat can be modelled by uh, as a pair of mass equal cylinders. The front back halves of the cat are linked to the centre of mass of the cat and the moment of inertia is I is proportional to the mass times the radius squared. And this here is just you know the formula for just a normal cylinder. If it was a point source it would be half mv squared. Alright, describe the motion of the cylinder uh, of the centre of mass um, of the cat during the uh, during its fall and explain why the linear momentum of the cat is increasing. So first and foremost we have no external forces so it's just going to be a simple you know center of mass um, sort of projectile motion but as it's just dropped straight down we don't have any sort of projectile motion so center of mass of mass accelerates downwards due to gravity. And that's what you'd expect, you know, if you drop if you drop something it's going to accelerate downwards. Explain why linear momentum of the cat is increasing. Um, so linear momentum momentum and when we write the word linear momentum, it always pays to put graphics P equals MV. So you can link that you know the formula. I don't know if you can see that very well. I hope you can. I'm using a different webcam this time. Increases because... Uh, you, yes. So because we're accelerating to gravity, our velocity is going to increase, which means our linear momentum is going to increase. So because vertical... <laughs> Velocity increases. Due to gravity, which is an external force. Uh, due to gravity. And I'll put brackets, external force, because it is. Force, look at that. So. I don't know if you can read that, I hope you can. Um, considering only the first half of the fall with the cat's legs tucked in, the front half of the cat can be modelled as a cylinder um, of radius 0 0.6, um, 0 0.06 metres, or 6 centimetres. During the first part of the cat's fall, uh, first part of the fall, the cat uses its muscles to twist the front legs around quickly to reach an angular velocity of 1.2 radians per second. If the angular momentum of the front half of the cat is that, calculate the rotational inertia of the front half of the cat. Right, that's pretty straightforward if we look in our formula sheet here. Um, this is sort of all, all the stuff from from here all the way along. So we've got torque is rotational inertia times angular acceleration. Torque is just you know force times radians. Normal angular momentum with just mass times velocity radius squared. And then angular momentum in terms of the inertia and the rotational velocity, uh, the angular velocity. So We'll probably be looking for we're given we're given the angular momentum I L equals I omega because it's asked to find the rotational inertia. So we're looking for the rotational inertia. We're given the angular velocity, so L is equal to no, L divided by omega is equal to I simple arrangement of algebra, which is equal to three point two um, Two four, time, uh, 2, 4 times 10 to negative 3, I'm going to leave the units out, divided by, we've got 1.2 radians, 
1.2. And notice 1.20 is three significant figures again, always three, three significant figures is equal to roughly 2.70 times 10 to negative 3. And it is kg meters squared. Meters squared because we cancel out the velocity component because we divide it by a velocity. Sweet. Right, next question. The cat, let me see that. The cat is able to twist the front half of the body even though the total angular momentum of the cat must remain zero. Explain why the total uh, explain why the total angular momentum of the cat must explain zero and explain why what must happen to the rear of the cat's body. So bullet point, no external for, uh, torques means angular momentum must be conserved. That's just the rule. Um, no external torques means angular momentum So I said no external torques means angular momentum must be conserved, i.e. equal to zero, because to begin with it had no angular momentum. So as a cat, um, just starting off with no angular momentum was just dropped. So it must be conserved to zero. So since the front half half So I've said, since the front half of the cat has momentum, the back half of the cat must have equal and but opposite momentum for this to be conserved. So in other words, you've got a positive momentum, we need to have a balanced negative momentum of the same magnitude, uh, otherwise it won't be zero. Because over the page here, it's, it starts off, well, when you think about it this way, if you drop a cat and you're not giving it any angular momentum to begin with, it's not going to have any angular momentum. So it has, to, it has to generate it by itself, and it means the net angular momentum still has to equal zero. So but the opposite momentum uh, must have equal, equal but opposite momentum for momentum. No, I spelled that wrong. To still be conserved. Yeah. Slash equal to zero. And then after I've answered the question, I check that I've actually answered the question. Explain why the total of the angular momentum must remain zero. Yeah, and I've said zero all the way through. And explain what must happen to the rear of the cat's uh, rear of the cat's body. Um, since the front half of the cat has momentum, the back half of the cat must have equal but opposite momentum. So I've explained both points. Um, that fully answers the question. Last question. Can we see that during the first half of the fall, the cat stretches out its legs. The rear half of the cat can be modelled as a cylinder of radius 0 0.12. Uh, our front, so if I go uh, radius front, if I put F, it is given over the page and it is 0 0.060 metres, 3 SF, 0 0.060 metres. So I'm just going to move it over here so I can see it. Um, explain how the cat can rotate the front and rear of its body at different speeds. In this answer, you should calculate the angular momentum of the rear half of the cat, explain why there is a difference in rotational speed between the front half of the cat and the rear half, and calculate the angular velocity of the rear half of the cat. So, like I said up here, the net momentum is still zero. So, we've got two cylinders. We've got front half of the cat up here, and we've got back half of the cat here, and they're two cylinders. So, one can go one way, 
and the other has to go the other way. And they're at different radiuses, so it means they can be at different speeds. So first and foremost, we'll say, I'm going to put you know, L for angular momentum, L little f, subscript f for front, plus L rear is equal to zero. Um, in other words, we count that angular momentum is on the other side of the page. It's 3.24 um, kg meters squared per second. Let's double check that. 3.24 okay, uh, times 10 to the negative 3. 10 to the negative 3. So it's 3.24 milli uh, kg meters per second. So that's, that's the that's the front plus, so we're going to have to have an equal but opposite, so minus 3.24 times 10 to the negative 3 kg meters per second, meters squared per second, I should say, um, equals 0. And this here equals rear, rear moment, uh, rear angular momentum. There we go. And I'm not even going to, not even going to write it in. I hope we can see that. Yeah, and I'll put a bracket around there as well. Just because. And this this is equal to the rear angular momentum. So the front is equal to the back, as if it's just the opposite opposite sign. So that's the first part. Calculate the angular momentum of the rear half of the cat. Easy peasy. Explain why there is a difference in rotational speed between the front half of the cat and the rear half. Um, so if we, I'm straight off the bat, if we change the radius, because we have. L is equal to I omega. Um, if we change the radius, we change our we change the rotational moment, and thus we change you know, we, dec we decrease the radius. We're decreasing the rotational inertia, and angular momentum is conserved, so our angular velocity has to increase. That's that's straight off. That's what the answer is. But I want to write it nice and clearly. So the front. I spelled that wrong. And back rotational speeds can be changed by the cat changing the radius. of its legs, thus changing the rotational inertia, changing its rotational inertia, rotational inertia, as the, rotation, oh, the angular momentum is equal to rotational inertia times the angular velocity, and L is conserved. Conserved. This means as I. Oh, I'll just put I increases due to to R increasing. Mega decreases or angular velocity decreases, and vice versa. Vice versa. Right, I think I probably could have answered that slightly better because I didn't link in the fact that explain why is there a difference in rotational speed of the front half and the cat and the rear half. Of the cat. I think I, I have for the most part front, front, and both front and back rotational speeds can be changed with the cat changing the radius of its legs. So. It's yeah, it's all right. It's that's answered, right? So last part: calculate the angular velocity of the rear of the cat. So that's going to be pretty straightforward. So we have, what do we have? We have L rear, which is equal to three point two four times ten to the negative three kg meters per second, which we worked out up top, which is fairly really straightforward. Um, we're at I. I is proportional to m r squared, but we don't really need that. Our r radius, because it's the rear, 
it's going to be 0 0.12 um, 0 0.12 calculate the angle velocity of the rear of the cat so there's a couple ways to go about this I think if I remember rightly I went L, oh here we go, L, R so the rear is equal to the front which is equal to um, omega yeah, omega I I of the radius of the front which is equal to um, so angular velocity of the rear which is equal to the angular let me move this up, the rotational inertia of the rear which is equal to the angular um, angular uh, angular velocity of the front which equals to the rotational inertia of the front it's early morning, it's about 7.30 in the morning that's so why I'm not really thinking very well right, well, there's seven rotational inertia for that so I'm going to make that uh, m r squared and this, this is all for the rear of the cat and this proportional um, is equal to I should say m uh, front m m uh, squared so let's cancel out the masses and this is the rear and that's the front so we're trying to we're trying to find out the angle velocity for the rear of the cat we've got so far if we can see that rearranging so I've, I've equated the angular momentums together I've put in the formula thing. I've you know I've equated them together and I've substituted in uh, the rotational inertia formula for for rotational inertia and I cancel out masses because it's the same way to the cat all the way through and then finally I just rearrange for the angular velocity of the rear of the cat which gives me mega uh, is equal to mega f times r uh, the uh, front of the cat squared, the radius of the front of the cat divided by radius back of the cat, uh, rear of the cat squared, which equals. I'm just going to skip skip the part. Oh, I put it in 1.2 radians per second. I'm writing over this, so you probably can't. I hope you can see it. Times radius of the front of the cat six zero three significant figures again. Uh, meters squared I should square that number divided by zero point the radius of the back zero point uh, that's one two zero squared meters which is equal to zero point zero three remember three SF all the way through radians second minus one. I hope you can see that. I'll just leave that there for a bit. Alright, so just double check we've answered the question. Have we explained why the angular momentum of the uh, calculate angular momentum of the rear half of the cat? Yep, it's equal to the front. Explain why there's a difference in rotational speed between the front half of the cat and the rear half of the cat? Yep, we've explained that. Calculate the angular velocity of the rear of the cat? Yep, we've calculated that. And just remember 3SF.